This is one cool thing I love about technology. It is the way it gives individuals or corporation or set of people the ability to artistically create solution to a prevailing problem in a customized way. Define the odds of uh, naysayers, uh, define the odds of people saying it can be done, building something truly out of the box without necessarily being new but truly innovative. In today's video, we will be considering one of those innovative products once again. It's called SurrealDB. SurrealDB, as it says on their website, is a highly scalable new SQL database. Now, what actually blew me away is the fact that this database is not tilted to one particular model. In fact, it is actually, ten, it is actually called a multi-model database. So it can act very well with your document database. I mean, the major reason why people use document databases for flexibility and scalability, and the major reason why people tilt into relational database is to be able to build a schema for the application and also make sure the application is asset compliant and um, maintainable and all of those good stuff, relationship and all of those good stuff. But this database, it's saying I can be all of those in one, right? You don't have to trade off flexibility or acid transactional queries or acid transactional um, applications. You don't have to, you don't have to trade off all of those things, right? You can have them in one and it is beautiful. Flexibility in modeling, distributed acid transaction. It was built with Rust. Oh, for the fun of it, I've actually been playing around with Rust. Uh, it's able to work with structured and unstructured data. Hence, what I just said about it being documents kind of database and on the other side, relational kind of database really doesn't fall into one. Querying using SQL. Well, the querying language looks like SQL, actually. It looks very much like SQL. In fact, it is actually called SQL as well. But the SQL is Sorrel DB QL querying language, right? But it looks like SQL, but it, but it has some subtle differences which you can easily pick up, but it is very easy to use. In a minute, we're actually going to be diving into it. The feature list goes on and on. And uh, I hope you guys would be able to check it out after now. So the first thing we're going to be considering is how to actually install Sorrel DB. Its installation is actually pretty simple. You can actually get it installed in a in few minutes. All you have to do is to run this command. Think what this does if you're on Windows like I am. I'm actually not going to install it because I have it installed. You literally just have to paste this on your terminal and boom, that's it. It's installed and you can also run it on Docker. If you're on Mac OS, all you need to do is to place this on your, on your terminal as well and it is good to go to run surreal db um what i would usually do is i would usually go into by so i could just do this once you have that installed already you can do you can do this and go into the location and i open the terminal from there That's a real actually running. So the first thing you need to do actually to, to start Soro DB is to run its command. It takes a username by default. Your username is root and your password as well is root. And you want our database to be in memory type so let's run this and boom the database has started it simply starts a web server for you the real db actually supports a number of methods for connecting to the database and performing queries the first is by using client libraries second is by using http and rest it actually exposes 
an HTTP API that you can call into, which is the pattern we're going to be using. You can also connect to it using WebSocket API as well. It's actually crazy. So, so the same thing you would do with your with your Firebase, Google Firebase, where you can get real time data. You can also do with SorrowDB as well. This is really crazy. So now we've started SorrowDB's local server. You can literally just use your Postman or but for myself. I am going to be using Thunder Clients in Visual Studio. As you can see, I've been playing around it. Let's start a new request. The first thing you need to do is to send a post request. Obviously, you're going to be accessing the server via the port it exposes. In our case, most of the time, by default, it's actually going to expose your 8,000 ports. So you'd have it's local host 8000 slash sql and you do a post request there are three things you need to pass here the first thing is your namespace so it actually works with the concept of namespace as well i guess that is basically for ordering your database and grouping them in a logical manner so in ours we are going to use tests i already have the test namespace in this database so we are going to be using that and you also need to specify the name of your database as well. For mine, I'm going to be saying, so we're just going to do test DB. All right. And also, it is very important that you pass your content type. Otherwise, it's actually not going to work. Try it. So we're going to have application JSON. Okay. So, and also you need to do a basic auth where you need to pass your username and your password basically for authentication and for new users your username would be root and your password as well is going to be root okay so let's go to the body first thing we can do is going to be using text so we can simply say the speed is actually sick it is it is really amazing it is very fast so that's how you actually confirm that your surreal db let's play around some session by default surreal db is schemaless by default you can enforce a structured data model which is your schema you can enforce that but by default it is schemaless so let's do account say set This cool set of JavaScript like functions. Okay, so let's do that. All right. So you see our response. All right. So it has created this. And you will notice that it actually gave us a random ID. And we're going to talk about this ID. This ID is this record ID is, is actually one of the most powerful stuff. Um in surreal db's database this is actually it is it is crazy yeah we'll get there i'm not going to go ahead of myself but obviously you can see most of the time when you do not supply or when you do not um define what your database would be it should generate a unique one for you and we obviously have our name here as well okay so let's let's go even further to now specify what our ID should be. All right, so we want our ID to be author John. And you see the funny way the ID actually works. So the way the ID works is it combines the name of the table, right? And the ID itself, the name of the record and the ID itself. And there is a reason why this is done and, and we'll, we'll get there. But just note that that's how it works. And now this ID can actually be anything. It can be numbers. It can be a GUID. It can be a text. It can be surrounded by braces. It is just sick. Also, look at how we have linking done in SorrowDB. All right. And which obviously brings that document, document nature, document use out of it. So yeah, I'm going to have first name. 
So you notice I have name dot first name, which obviously means all of these properties should be within within name. All right, name object. So let's say this is Zion. Okay, so we are creating another record called John and the ID for this record is explicitly stated. So we are not going to get a uniquely a generated ID. All right, so let's run this. Okay, so you can see the ID, the record ID, auto John. And now look at the name object. Full name is combination of Zion and Dami, which is the first and last name. Let's see how linking works and that's technology in SorrowDB because you don't do joins in SorrowDB. Even, even writing um, a structured data model, all right, you don't do joins. You actually use linking. That's how you perform your joins, which I think is a boost in performance if you ask me. But let's see how it works. So we want to link this particular author to the previous account that we created so let's let's do that let's create a link so because obviously i remember the id for my auto i can easily just just type it in all right and now i'm also going to be linking the account now because we know the id of this author you can easily link it in but because I do not know the ID of this account, I can actually still perform a sub query. So I can do a select ID from account where name. You can see it's SQL like actually. It's Zion Soft Inc. Limit one. Let's run this and create our article. Okay, there is a problem. Let's see where the problem is. Another beautiful thing about this is how explicit the information is when you actually have a problem. So this is the problem was with the database passing. Error. Okay, so this is where the issue is. Set V. So let's do that again. All right. So you see our results. So this is our article record. Now you can see the accounts. So it actually selected the account where name is Zion Soft Inc. So it has actually linked this particular article with this account and with this author. <laughs> this is this is sick, guys. <laughs> it is sick. Let's let's see how we can go ahead querying querying our data. So let's do select all from article select all from article so this this is the article we've created and obviously if you had created more you can see that it's in an array format app array of objects so it's just going to pour out all of the articles that we've created now what if you actually want to select at the same time multiple records that's actually possible can go ahead to say article and account and it's actually going to select those multiple records for you it is going to select multiple records for you all right all 
all right now you can see that our auto is actually not populated you can actually go ahead to populate our auto by saying by using the fetch keyword you can do fetch auto and we can even also populate our accounts all right now you can see that our account is actually populated this is the account linked to it and the auto is actually populated as well the auto linked to it and this is how join actually works in real life right uh, but you actually do not need joins here this is how this works it is it is crazy guys and speaking about the records the cost of this pattern the database does not need to do does not need to do table scan and does not need to do index scan it solely queries retrieves the record by by the id and i think this is this is a huge performance boost to be honest guys i, I think they are killing it um it might take them a little bit more time to get there but i mean i think they are actually killing it now are there alternatives i think they are not the first to actually bring up this um this pattern whereby you would not need to actually forfeit um acid but i think they are just doing this in in another cool manner all right i think one of them is fauna db and to be honest guys i mean um users are heterogeneous in nature right so it is basically understanding the problem that each of these technology solves and see the one that works for the problem you want to solve if you have not subscribed make sure to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up and a like if it makes sense to you share it with your friends and let's meet on the next one bye bye